Well, welcome to the podcast, Corey McCulloch. Thank you. Scottish light. No, hang on a minute. Let me start again. This <laughs> guy's <laughs> super welterweight, isn't it? Yeah, that's Aye. the third person that's. Uh, I was going to say light middleweight. There's so many weight classes. So, junior middleweight used to be called junior, junior middleweight, mm-hmm. and it's now super welterweight. Well, most people reference it with super welterweight now. Right. Don't know why. So, super welterweight Scottish champion at the mm-hmm. moment. Stopped Fraser Wilkinson for that. That must have been a happy occasion. Yeah. Is that your first pro title? Yeah. First pro title. We were supposed to box for the welterweight title for over a year. So the whole year of, I think it was 2001, we were supposed to bo- box for the welterweight one. But I had pull out after pull out. So it was about three opponents I had lined up and then it just fell through. So at the end of the year, Fraser agreed to fight. It was super welterweight. So I had to jump up to fight him. Uh, obviously the first fight didn't go to plan. But yeah, like you say, to get a stoppage for your first title, and it was in the care hall as well. So there was a lot of people that don't usually get to go to my fights. Yeah. To obviously, the distance of traveling, um, they got to see it, and it was it was brilliant. A great occasion. It was, that. It was great. Really, really. The good. champion of your country. Ah, I felt like there's. I never, I never set out to do any of this. None, none like this at all. Uh-huh. Um, I, it was more of a. It was more of a personal thing to prove that I could go and train hard and have a pro fight and win, lose, or draw. I was walking away. I was like, I just want to do this once. And that was, I was still smoking at the time. I didn't care. <laughs> I really? just, uh, Shug refused. He was like, I'm not go like, we can't do this. I just started working offshore after, the day after my last amateur fight, I went offshore. So I'm sitting, I was sitting, I said this on another podcast, but I probably shouldn't. But I was sitting in the smoking area uh, offshore I'm smoking uh-huh. away while trying to arrange Shug to train me <laughs> to go to turn <laughs> professional and what most people think is the hardest sport in the world and you know yourself it's physically you need to be mega fit yeah smoking smoking doesn't yeah. help um, so that was uh, did you stop smoking that day? no 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 I never stopped smoking until about I didn't smoke during training but as soon as I had a fight, every time I had my first three, four pro fights after them, I already, in my head, I thought I was a world champion because of the the feeling of winning. Everything's great. You're on top of the world. And I thought, right, that's it. Pub, takeaways, cigarettes. That was it. And I never I never lived the life the way you should as a fighter until later on in my career. Okay. Much. I mean, you must be benefiting from it now. So. Oh, mega! I, uh, God knows how I got away with. Did you know that you were? Did you know that you were unfit? Like, I mean, obviously you've gone in and you're, and you're winning pro fights, mm. but did you know whether you were fit or not? I knew. Did you, I was, did you think you're, uh, you're okay? I'm fit enough, even though I'm smoking. No, that... I knew I was unfit. <laughs> so, obviously, the the last that I've done two ten round fights that have went the distance. If you ask me after my first few fights could you do 10 rounds I struggled to do four I like, yeah. really struggled to do four and now I can do depending obviously the harder I work the more rounds you could do but initially I was like how do people how do people do how do people do 10 12 rounds yeah I don't know I, 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 like, <laughs> I mean I'm shocked when I done it 10 is hard oh, that's really hard I even just I, I had never done six I'd only done fours and then I took a late no, uh, short notice fight with Dean Sutherland from here and that was a 10 rounder. That was at the beach ballroom. That was at the beach ballroom, yeah. And and, and Dean's a highly rated fighter. Oh, mega. The 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 thing the thing with that fight is obviously me and Dean have got respect from each other from when I first started. He was one of the first boys I started a sparring with when I turned over. Um so it was it was an awkward fight because there was a bit of obviously there's respect there. And Dean's uh was ready to go and take on somebody he doesn't know. In the uh, in front of everybody, and then the last minute opponent, somebody that you know, have respect for. It's so obviously it's hard to get g'd up to and flip pain and have a good scrap with someone yeah. when you kind of have that mutual respect. He, which, he he was a little bit critical of his own performance in that yeah. fight, which I think is a, a real sign that you boxed well. Yeah, well, I mean, I I <clears throat> don't I take credit to I give myself credit for doing the ten rounds. Because obviously it was Dean being Dean, he's, he's not there. He wasn't there playing nice. You know what no. I mean? He was still there to, to get his win. I just don't think both our performances, I think it put the uh, 
a different opponent in there with him or me, it would have been a different fight. Um, just because it's, you don't really want to... I, I feel... I feel weird fighting somebody that I know. I don't like fighting people that I've sparred with and, and speak to because you have that kind of better mutual respect and then it's all out the window. Same with Fraser. We we done, uh, I think we had two or three sparring sessions previous. You know, you speak to each other, you've messaged each other online and then when it's announced, it's like nothing. You just don't fucking speak to each other. You don't yeah. like each other now. It's yeah. like, it's that kind, and I don't like that. I'd you need to get into some, that mindset. Someone don't I don't know because then I'm not going to see them. Possibly not see them again. You know, what I mean? it just feels better to me. I yeah. don't know if anybody else feels like that, but to me, you, it's like that. I mean, when you're sparring with uh, with other people in your weight division, mm. you must think to yourself, "This guy's an opponent one day." I, I've well, the boy, like the projection of all these boys I spar with, they're all wanting to go to the top and they put everything in their life and so on to me now is a bit different but initially I just, I just like I just like a fight I'm not trying to go to these places you know what I mean these guys are all like they've got strength and conditioning coaches they've like they've got companies that give them their meal they've got everything in place to go as far as they can so when I'm watching these when I'm sparring with these guys I'm like fucking hell he's good yeah. he's really good like he's going places Yeah, never doesn't cross my mind that I might fight him one day like, because I don't know if I'm going to keep fighting. You know what I mean? I'm just mm -hmm. span, just for the sake of span. Um, but you know, the, the likes of Dean Fraser and Paul Keane, these, these guys are all like they live and breathe boxing. Whereas, it's just... your last fight didn't look like a hobby. Well, well not no. your last. <laughs> when I watched the Fraser Wilkinson fight, it uh, it did not look like a hobby. You, you 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 can apply a lot of pressure. That's well because my average boxing ability that's how I overcome that's how I feel that I need to overcome because I've not had my amateur career was 11, 12 fights maybe I mean, like I say I smoked through all that I wasn't nothing special at all nothing like I had no nobody would look and go well, he's actually pretty good well Corey can I just say because I I, I did get to work your corner mm -hmm. a couple of times yeah and then um, I, I will always remember there was one thing that stood out about you that was different from all the other uh, boxers. I mean, you were you were you were a youth boxer at mm. the time. When we were making the fights, everybody would ask a thousand questions: Who am I boxing? Yeah. Who am I boxing? Uh, can I box someone else? I, I don't want to box that guy. I want to box this guy. Can you not get me an absolute dud to box? Mm. You know. And people just what is whenever we told you you were boxing, you'd just be like. Great, let's do it. Yeah, it's, still, it's the <laughs> same at this day. You're boxing Terence Crawford. Great, let's It'd do it. It'd be fine. <laughs> because it, I don't know, it, it, even to now, Shug or uh, my manager, Sam, they'll, they'll give you a shout and they'll give you a call. And it, it doesn't it doesn't even cross my mind to think about it. Aye. It's just, uh, that's fine. If, as long as it works in date-wise, uh, as long as it's, uh, I don't know what kind of, I don't look at anything like the opponent. Just well, that works. It's my birthday the week after that, so if I fight that date, I can have a good drink for my birthday. Or, or the good one, or another one I like to look at is when it's close to Christmas. If it's close to Christmas time. I know I'll be lean, I'll be fit, and then when it comes to Christmas, I can have a nice blowout and relax and not yeah. worry too much about my figure and whatnot. Is is that like a kind of like a almost like that is the reward for you? Is the the blowout? It was, it was because. I did, it, you, you feel you feel on top of the world after it for a good two three days and uh, it's when when you go to the shops or whatnot when you're finished you nip and eyes then people are asking oh, I've seen your fight I've seen well done blah 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 it makes you feel good and it's not a lot of people do it so it makes you proud that you're the only person that's doing this kind of stuff and it, it, I just like the feeling it brings yeah how um, many how many pros is there in the town well, there was Hayden, there was Joe, but actively just now, it's just it's just me. Just you, yeah, just me actively. Okay, and you have uh, you have a pretty exciting fight coming up as well yeah. down on the uh, on the Josh Warrington undercard. Yeah. Well, like I was saying before, when I think about reasons to take a fight, yeah. like I know I get to watch this live, and that's half the reason. And as soon as yeah. I heard it was there was a possibility it was going to be on there, we didn't know for sure, and then we worked out the dates and. It has to be on that show. It has to be that show, and it's, it's going to be amazing to be at. So my fight aside, I'm looking forward to watching that fight live. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm more looking forward to that than my own 
fight, but <laughs> that just shows how relaxed you yeah. are about it, Corey. The, the end of the day, the way I look at it now, especially now having the wee man, I've got nothing. Obviously, bringing it down, nothing happens bad in this fight, health wise. Um, but I have nothing to lose in any fight. I still go home with family, get a few bob for it. Chinese at night. I've got nothing to lose. There's no need to put so much pressure. Obviously, it's nerve wracking. Everybody gets nervous, and if they say otherwise, it's rubbish. There's there is nothing to if you've got. I've got everything at home. I don't need to. So I was kind of yeah. That's one of my questions I wanted to ask you, Corey. Nerves, right? So mm -hmm. because because when I when I boxed, I loved that feeling of nerves. Mm -hmm. It's strange. It's like a sick feeling, but you feel alive. I mean, yeah. I don't know. How do you deal with that? How do you feel about nerves? I. I'm probably the opposite from you. I don't, I don't, I tell myself I like it. I try and convince myself that I like it. But then the fear and everything, and I think it's more, it's more the fear of losing and letting people down that gets to me. So I put the f first half of my career, I put so much pressure on myself thinking I need to win this. So I, I kind of go home and my pal's speaking to me and uh, like what went wrong, what happened? And I'm like, I don't want to feel like that because you experience your first couple of fights you've won you don't want that feeling to leave getting a defeat like going to the pub the next day and I keep referring back to going to the pub it's not the case <laughs> nowadays but going to the pub the next day is a great feeling it's not so good when you get beat because that my first was it my first defeat my first defeat in my fourth fight was during lockdown and he took a fight down south for uh, Elliot Whale and it was stopped in the first round. I took a, a heavy body shot that it managed to stand up. It was one in the fight. The ref was like, no. Um, that was when I got home, it was devastating. I drank a bottle, a bottle of whiskey, not out of sorrow or depression type thing. I just was, I just made, I was just making laughs and jokes about it, yeah. smiling away and what a fucking mess I was that night. And looking back, it's a defeat makes you a defeat. If, if it doesn't break you're getting beat then it just drives you to think like go and right your wrongs go and yeah. go and prove that that, was, that wasn't you it, it makes you feel I mean like uh, you, your coach Shug mm -hmm. uh, I remember he was rooting for me in my in my first fight mm -hmm. as an amateur and I thought I was going to be the next Mike Tyson yeah. you know and you, uh, <laughs> you know there's a, there's a whole heap of people in the room watching me get into the ring and they watch me get absolutely pounded from pillar to post you know for a round it lasted a round I got an absolute beating this, I felt so sick and not the pain wasn't the issue pain, you know physical no, pain was relevant, not the issue yeah. it was the losing in front of everybody mm -hmm. you know it's a horrible the, you've feeling you've got the, the oh, unlucky and you can see it in the face the feeling for you like I don't want this I'd rather high fives and the, the, right. the beers flowing and everybody's happy but it's it's such it's the joke aside boxing is such a tough tough right. tough sport it's like, but the, you you know, losing like like you're talking about the Elliot mm -hmm. Whale fight that loss or certainly when I, when I lost I it, it it really made me because I I I, I said I'm never going to let that happen mm -hmm. again that that'll never you need happen. To, I I felt as soon as that was done, even my my girlfriend she was like oh yeah like she initially thought he's going to come home he's going to be fucking miserable I don't want to see him I don't want to the, the mm -hmm. box will be done type thing. But no, obviously I was mega disappointed. It was more disappointed. It wasn't even the losing. It was just how the, the, the fight went because um, I knew I had so much more to offer. But losing to just for, for that fight when most people were like, he's only doing this for fun. He's only boxing because he likes to fight. I'm getting beat. He would just be like, fuck it, chuck it. But I actually did. I think that was that was probably the turning point when I was like, I actually need I need I need to put more effort into this. Was this where the diet changed and the and the you know the pub I, and the quite <coughs> possibly cigarettes. because it was like my life changed maybe two three years ago because um, I was out constantly. If I wasn't boxing, I I was, I was uh, nine times out of ten I'd be in the pub at the weekend, um, and I, I don't know what the turn, turning point exactly was. But ever since then, ever since focusing more on just staying healthy, being being home more often with the family, I'm so ten times more happier. And I don't think it was a turning point in boxing, but it's made a hell of a difference to obviously my boxing 
going into a fight camp already fit and not two, three stone overweight Aye. makes a massive difference. What what is what's camp like then for you? This one this one's been a bit up and down um because initially we had we had this fight planned for before I went to Texas. So this was back in July before July and we couldn't go the way the dates worked out was uh, uh, we were actually going to be away so I got the fight was all arranged while I was in Texas so as soon as I found out that I'm sure it was like five days before we went to fly back that's when camp officially in my head started it was a big opportunity here we go um, so I started training when I was in Texas doing some runs and whatnot in the heat thought, like, this is, I've got 10, 11 weeks but now it's getting closer the amount of issues we've had um, and I think it's due to uh, physically I'm going to take time off from training and I think it's because I've had so much time to think about it. Usually it'd be seven, eight weeks and that's more than enough time. But see, having all this time, there's too many things that play in it for 10, 11 weeks. It's, I've, I've, I feel I've blown a gasket initially at the start of the camp. Part, my partner wasn't well for a week, the best part of a week and obviously we've got a young son so I had to look after him. I had to take time off work everything's just been a bit up and down with this but I think that's going to be I think that's going to play in my favour um, no camp ever goes to plan it, ne it never has there's always something there's always fuck, I've had to take four days off I'm not feeling too well or a couple of weeks lean up to the fight the weight's not really on point so you need to start cutting everything back none's ever went perfect you know I think though when you get when you're going into the ring you know you, some things never go 100% perfect no, but, no. But what you've got is what you've got. Yeah. You know, and, and just then, go with it. And if you, you put so much pressure on yourself, like, Jesus, I'm not training near as much as I should have. And then when you're actually in there and you're popping off and things feel good and you feel kind of fit, you're like, fuck, I don't know what I was worried about. Yeah. But I, I, I put so much pressure on myself every fight if I've done enough or if I've had to turn down span because, I don't know, I've, I've like worked you, just something. I'm like, fuck it. When, before the fight, I'm like, I've missed out on that span four weeks ago. I've missed out on that six weeks ago. And it all starts playing in my head. I don't know if every, anybody else is the same, but it starts playing in my head like I should have done that. Or that morning I never got up and trained. Or, but yeah, all these things come in. Even if I've had a good eight weeks, it still plays in my back of my head. Fuck, I should have done that. Have I done enough? I don't know if I feel fit. Even in span, you feel great. Two weeks later and it's the night of the fight, you're like, I don't know if I'm fit. I don't know if I've done enough. Maybe it's just me, but mm -hmm. yeah. Do you visualise the fight? In your head? Eh, uh, sometimes. When I can't sleep at night, it sometimes goes through my head, but I, I like to just try and play it. I've been in so many different situations now where you go in there thinking this is how this is going to go, mm -hmm. and it goes completely the opposite. Yeah. So there's no... Because I... For personally, I think, if you go in my game plan, you think, right, this is how it's going to go, and it doesn't, for example, if you were looking to put pressure on somebody who was a back foot fighter and they start coming forward and you're like, oh, fuck this, this is the part of the plan. I don't know what to do. And then that's when shit has a fan, you start panicking. You just go in with an open book. Wait, that's interesting. When you're boxing, how often does your game plan change during a fight, like even in a round? Do, do, do you alter your game plan according to whatever's happening? Uh, yeah, but obviously we've got, initially going in, you've got some sort of idea and what you want to put forward if the boys are south or just little things like, like that but you just need to play it as it comes so you could it, it probably changes every round depending on how I'm feeling if you want to put pressure on something you're feeling a bit gas you maybe done a bit too much work the round before you need to kind of ease up and yeah the, the couple, a couple of maybe every round you need to try, try and what well, I try and reevaluate what's going on how am I doing what could I do better? Do I need to slow myself down? Do I need to pick the pace up? Depend if he's tired, start putting on him. There's a shug's job though. I just I'm just there to take the punches on the chin and and listen to him. Right. Shout him. Well, I mean, he, you know, he's shug. Your coach shug is uh, such an experienced guy. He's, yeah, he's trained pros the for years and co uh, amateurs and a lot mm -hmm. of uh, fights himself. So, how did? What's your relationship with shug like? How did oh, you? I love hate. How did you, I can imagine, how did uh, you initially like come to becoming a pro with Shug? So he had these amateur club up and running mm -hmm. um, and I think I boxed for him once 
Like that it was two years or something. It was up and running. I think he boxed once, and uh, after the fight, I think it's, I stopped the boy in the first round, and I'm pretty sure it was before that he did float the idea because I was in the gym training a lot. Um, and then this was before I got the job offshore. So this maybe a month before my last amateur fight, he floated the idea. Would you ever do it? And I was like, hell yeah, that's what put the like. I had never thought about it on my own, but when he floated the idea, I was like. That'd be pretty cool. Like have yeah. a name on a t shirt <laughs> and get to fight in these fancy venues and that's that's what yeah. kinda got me going. But then offshore, uh, the life that I was living working offshore. Um yeah, so when, when I was sitting in the smoking shack offshore and I I, I messaged him, is this still part of the game plan? And obviously he reality obviously set in and thought this isn't gonna work. Like, it's bad enough how much time I spend doing harm to my body, drinking and eating rubbish for the takeaway all the time. If I'm offshore for three weeks, eating shite, not training, I do what I want. In his head, he'd be like, this ain't going to work. You struggle to train for an amateur fight, how are you going to do it for the pros? So I actually went behind his back and arranged a meeting with my manager today. And when and <laughs> went, so he he was none the wiser to any of this. Right. Um, a couple of <laughs> a couple of little lies slipped in. I'm good enough to be a pro. I'm good enough. Um, just to get the ball rolling. And then everyone was done. Dustin and think I was known Shug for so long. There was once the ball was rolling, there was like there's no stopping this. I'm going through with this no matter what. Had you had your did did you go to Shug and say Shug? By the way, I have a pro license and uh, I need coaching. Well, or, or... I, I had a, a meeting with my manager to discuss like terms and every, everything that goes to getting your license. Um, but you don't get it like that after that. You have to go and sit down in front of the board of control and... Oh, do you? Yeah, you need to go and talk shite and... What, what, what sort of... What, no, what shite all do you talk? I can remember, this was like going back four years ago, it was the big room, big circular table, and there must have been, what, eight, nine guys there? And just you? And just me, my manager. Uh, Shug wasn't in the room, it was just me and my manager, Sam, that went in. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I don't know what the fuck's like going the on. The round table, like. I was terrified. <laughs> like, so what, yeah. what, uh, what makes you think you're good enough to go pro? And I'm like, I don't fucking know. I have no idea. And then Sam, I've obviously been through this before, obviously, gifted a guy was going on. And and they made us, they actually made us, I think they do this quite a lot. They actually made us stand outside the room as if they're going to have a discussion, if they're going to grant you your license. And I was just like, what the fuck's going on? There's loads of people turned pro. Like, it's just, it was just strange. And then you go back in, sat down, and says, right, yeah, we'll give you... And then they say, they say they're going to come watch your first couple of fights to make sure you're obviously capable enough to actually box. Um, I don't think that ever happened. But yeah, Shug had to come down for that. We got the train down. And uh, <laughs> after after we got the grant, like, that's your licence, that's you. Job done. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll send, pay your fees, whatever, we'll we'll send you your license we went to a co-op on the way back to the train, st train station I bought beers and <laughs> 20 fags <laughs> and got the train back up I might sitting, we were sitting in the pub one of my pals Clooney I text him and goes that's me got my pro license I'm just I'm on the train back to Ardrove do you want to come meet us at the Westport bar I'm sitting there I've already like, I've won a world fucking title I'm sitting in the bar sitting at the bar with Shug and Shug wasn't drinking I'm like, this is, they've just got a fucking granted your pro license, and this is what the first oh, protocol. I, I can imagine it's, it's, uh, it was, uh, he, he wasn't was hanging uh, his head. His, his thought then would have just been, let him just have this, and then we'll knuckle down once we get a date for the, the fight and stuff. But uh, it's, when I look back and how everything came together, and to where it is just now, and the way I am as a person just now, it's, it's, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's, it's funny to, to, to speak about it. Aye, that board of control thing. I was speaking to Ronnie Clark, who mm -hmm. was uh, he won the European yeah. title from Dundee, the guy from Dundee, and uh, you know he came from kickboxing into boxing. Mm -hmm. He was a world champion kickboxer. I think it was kick or K one or something yeah. like that. And he went to the board of control. He just wanted to go a straight straight professional fighter, mm -hmm. and they refused him his license. Yeah, he said no. He had to box as an amateur. And just to prove yeah but but box in Scotland wouldn't allow him to go into the elite championships so here's this world champion kickboxer in a novice tournament and he just just obliterated everybody Madness. he just went through everyone and then uh, I think it was pretty much the same story and then he boxed uh, 
I think the guy who won the gold for Scotland in the Commonwealth Games, the the little ginger guy from Glasgow. Well, yeah, uh, was it Charlie? Charlie Flynn. Yeah, yeah. That was the only guy that gave him any kind of trouble. Mm -hmm. I, think he's, I, I don't know if he beat him or not, um, but it seemed crazy. You know, like that guy, obviously he's a f pretty seasoned fighter, you, th you yeah. know, albeit it wasn't boxing, but... But that's, it's weird. Uh, I don't know how how true this is, but seemingly they asked the same question to uh, Josh Taylor. No. What what makes you think you're good enough to be a professional? <laughs> like, well, I'm pretty I'm pretty fucking good. Yeah. Like, surely you know, and they do. Obviously, they know. Aye. Um, I don't know how. I'm sure. I'm sure I did. That was. I don't know if they would have just been joking or not. But if I can get a pro license, then because we, yeah, I, you don't need to take your, your your amateur card down. I think they just ask, and uh, twelve fights. So initially, in my head, I was like, they're not going to grant because I didn't know how. I don't know how they went about it. How see how hard it was to get a license? Um, how how much harder is pro boxing than amateur boxing? I don't know if it's because I'm fit now, but I pre I prefer the pro game because the amateurs. I sparred with some amateurs just now, and they light me up. Like these guys are so fucking quick. Like I, one punch, and it's actually by the time they take they throw one punch at me, it feels like ten. So rapid, and I can't get out of the way of them. These amateurs are incredible. The pros is more, it's like more slowed down. Like your shots, you're actually trying to inflict damage in your shots, so you're more relaxed. You pick your shots more, so it's a slower pace, but the shots hurt a lot more. And because every, like the pros are more experienced, and the, the nine times out of ten when they do throw a shot, they're going to hit you. Um, so... I think the amateurs are more skilled and it's more difficult to be a good amateur. I mean, anybody can go in the pro game. If they're fighting not a very good pro, then they can do okay. But amateurs, I would definitely say the amateurs are a lot more, less physical, but I, I think I would struggle more what, than amateurs now. What do you make of people like uh, Jake Paul stepping in, uh, straight into professional boxing? I don't really have an opinion on it. People, people, people have asked me this before and I'm like, these... These guys can do what the fuck they want. Have you watched them? I've watched. I watched. Um, I was. In, I was in the pub, and that Jake was it. Jake Paul and Tommy Fury was it that oh, yeah. fight? Yeah. Um, I mean, you can you can box. People people take the high road and think I shouldn't be doing this. I've worked so. Hard. These guys make so much money, make so much noise. They can do what the fuck they want. If they're not allowed to box. They'll go start their own promotion and there's no stopping guys for this much. I think that, uh, you know, someone like Nate Diaz is probably going to get paid more to box Jake Paul than he made in his entire career. career. Plus some. Uh, double. You know, yeah, double. And they probably call him and say, would you like to fall on the floor for, for double your entire career earnings? I said, would you box Jake Paul? 100%. Would you? You think you'd 100%. beat him? I'd hope so. Well, What's his weakness? He's under-experienced. Mm -hmm. I reckon you put 80% of the boxers in Scotland, pro boxers, half-decent pro boxers would give him a tough test. Like, it's just, just due to experience. Everybody's fought, it's been to his favour, you know what I mean? If I, if I was the same weight... <laughs> That I think it would be no issue of beating him. The only thing that would be a struggle is obviously he does seem kind of, when you see him, he does look kind of beefy. Like if, a bit steroid built. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Anybody would entertain that fight. Um, be daft not to. I, when I first saw the fight, I, I thought I would box him. Mm -hmm. And I'm like four stone overweight. Fuck it. <laughs> Do it doesn't matter. I mean? Like walking in there and getting paid that amount of money, that's you mm -hmm. set up for the rest of your days. He, to, to be fair to Jake Paul, like he was quite novice to start with, but he has improved. He has. Is and it, it, like he puts it, from what I see online, like you see when he was uh, fighting Nate, all the training and stuff, he does, he does work hard. So... The, like put it this way somebody of that stature that name right he's known everywhere should he go and fight in small hall shows where he needs his security to be with him in case somebody tries to jump him or mug him or you know what I mean like guys like that are always going to be in a big platform regardless what it is I know I mean the thing is everybody in pro boxing is looking to get to the one big payday mm -hmm. and that guy 
is fortunate enough that he has an audience. Mm -hmm. Well, that's can, how it, boxing is yeah. a pro boxing is a business. And it's as simple as that. It's not. There's no friends. There's no fairness in it. If it makes money, it's, it makes sense in everybody's eyes. Mm -hmm. like, there's probably. I mean, these guys that are, have the opportunity to box someone like Jake Paul, they're probably thinking to themselves, right? Like the hardest fight in my career, I could be fighting Canelo Alvarez, and it's going to take me my whole career to get there. Mm -hmm. Or fight this guy. He's and not if that, you get there, not that good, and I'll get paid a lot more. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> you know, I don't care what anybody <coughs> says. Anybody would jump on that. Mm -hmm. Like, take pride out and legacy and all that. Fuck, if you're going to pay me a lot of money, I'll, that, right now, I'd fight anybody tomorrow. Anybody in the world. <laughs> I know if you I, would. If I was paid. <laughs> you would, Corey. Like, I would just, obviously, there's always a risk in boxing you can get hurt, but uh -huh. it, it is what it is. That's what, you get paid well enough. How, one of the hardest things for a pro boxer, right, it's like, well talked about is food, and weight do you what's your life like with food and weight and do you battle to make weight or not not now the last the last i always leave it last minute um but it's the last week i'm like fuck, i've still got a little bit to get off but four weeks out i'm, like, I'm actually on on doing pretty well i'm pretty close to my weight but every time i stand standing the scales in the bathroom I'm, like, oh, I'm pretty fucking close right i can unleash a little bit tonight i can have another bowl of chips i can have that and then it just it's like, it just goes into a, a massive feast at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> but no, I see the last couple of years I've been, uh, maybe maybe the last year I've been spot on. I've been watching. They've just been staying healthy throughout in, in between fights because it takes takes all the fun away from just general life. Going out for tea. I can go out for tea. In fact, we're planning on going out for tea tomorrow night, you know, a week before the fight. Mm -hmm. I'm not be eating shite. Well, steak and chips or something like that would be fine but yeah I, t I tend to look after myself a lot better um so how close are you to the weight and you know this morning yeah. this morning i was on weight i was exactly what i need to be nice and i've not ate too bad after training when i nipped home when she was actually having chicken and rice and i was like i'll just have a little bit of that yeah. so i don't know where i'm going to end up when i leave here Maybe nip in a wee Tesco, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, we're coming up to Aberdeen tomorrow to get uh, my son new shoes. He's just started walking. Oh. Um, so I'll take. I'll maybe go for lunch or I'll maybe go for tea when we get back. And that'll be my last little cheat. But I used to walk around first few fights. After the fights, I would walk around at like 82, 83 kilograms and I would box at 70 so wow. that Elliot Whale fight, I was walking in my drive and I got the call and it was eight, it was eight weeks. I had eight weeks for that fight. And I was like, fuck, what weight am I? I ran upstairs, stood the scales off. So this is middle middle of the day. It was going to be heavy. I was like 84 kilograms. So I thought, like, if I don't eat from now till the morning, what would it be in like 81, maybe generous 81. So I had to shift all that weight and that fight was at 68 kilograms. Oh, my goodness. It was madness. It was even, even I think we lost two or three kilograms the night of the, the night before the weigh-ins. How did you do that? They had their, because it was COVID, so you uh -huh. weren't allowed to leave the hotel. You couldn't leave. You yeah. had to, there was a, a shop you were allowed to go into, I think it was a little across the road, you were allowed to go in at the start where you get all your stuff. Um, because you were, you had to stay in the room, stay in the room overnight, you got a test the following night and your results back the following and then it was the way in. So they had a they had a room in the hotel that was uh they had the heating on all, all day and all night. We had obviously a sauna suit. They put a tiny little this is the shittest running machine in the world, a little bike, there was pads, there was ropes, and you just had to sweat it out. I think yeah. we'd done a kilo a kilo and a half the night before the way in and then a kilo and a half the morning of the way in. Was there no crowd at this fight, by the way? What was that like? Very strange. I had never even bought, I hadn't boxed in such a, that was the biggest thing that I boxed at. Um, and it was, you went in, it was, what was the arena called? Come in. It was a big fancy arena. And you had your section, changing rooms off, everybody kicking about with masks and like height of COVID. And I remember you walked in, like the wee, the wee walkway a bit, and then there was a production guy that came got you and took you out to the stage where you would walk out and you just stand there and you're Todd 
and there's these cam the cameras and everything flying about the ceiling. Obviously, like that's how it is in the TV. It's they're just big strings and they're just flying everywhere. And I was like, this is surreal, and you've got no buzz because you're walking out. So just guys with headphones on, just obviously recording everything. It was just very strange. It was weird to watch. I because can imagine. You can hear every punch. Yeah. You can hear it so clearly. Yeah. On the TV. I know you can when you're at a show, mm -hmm. but when you're normally when you're watching the TV, you can't actually hear that. Mm -hmm. but you, it, it, was a good, it was a good experience to. Obviously, it's going to be much better next week when there's thousands and thousands of people there, but it was it was such a surreal, surreal experience with all the cameras and whatnot and production team and. Being told right, everything's run, like run on schedule. It was, it was there. Uh, it kind of takes your mind off the fight because mm -hmm. you're enjoying. Like, this is fucking. This is madness. <laughs> yeah. I mean, saying the the, the, the you're promoter the at the time. Yeah, I was like, this is amazing. He's like, you like this? And I'm like, aye. I bet. And they box it comes up. Says, this is cool as fuck. Yeah. It just doesn't. It doesn't happen. And did you see? Were you, was there like uh, well-known boxers kicking I seen, about? And so obviously that was the first round that went down. Um, and Adam Booth was speaking to the boy that talked me down. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also asked Barry McGuigan where the toilet was. I was trying to play it cool. I went into this this room. Um, I was all geared up. I, was, I wasn't on first, that's a lie. Um, he was getting his suit and everything on for obviously being doing the, the TV bullshit. And I mean, walking, I seen him. I was like, I, seen that, I see that guy on TV all the up. time. And I goes, where's the toilet? And he just pointed, he's just in there. I was like, try to play it cool, like, but I was like, I fucking just text my girlfriend. I was like, Barry McGuigan, I've just walked in and I'm putting his tr suit fucking trousers uh -huh. on. <laughs> um, he would, yeah. He'd probably speak to quite the thing because he seems very down to Yeah, well, I, I was I just kind of, I'm getting G'd on. Where's the toilet? I'm just, I wish I went back in and spoke to him. Aye. Um, but I can't mind who else was there. But when you see these faces on the TV all the time, like next weekend's going to be even better. Oh, I, yeah. I do get quite starstruck when, like, like fucking hell, I see, I've seen him in the TV loads. And then seeing him in person, it's there. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. It'll be a who's who of the... I'll be, I'll, I'll be taking photos of with everybody. Yeah. Even wanting when they're walking to the fucking ring. <laughs> Except be, your opponent. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I probably will after, after afterwards. Um, Would you, this, this opponent, I, I've seen a little bit of him. He looks like a bit of a bag of tricks, like switch oh. hitter... Oh, it would be mega difficult boxing uh, it him. Looks awkward. Yeah, these guys, these young, it's like they're brilliant. They're, they're so well schooled. It's it's a very tough house to does beat he, somebody like that. Is he one of these sort of Brendan? Ing is, he, is that his home city? He's a, he's a Brendan Ingle fighter or something. I'm not, is he? I'm not, not sure. Brendan Ingle, um, but he comes from the Ingle gym. No, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't think he trains out there. He has now. that kind of style, like yeah, he's, he's mega awkward. And do you know what? It's probably the worst style that I. I, I can fight against because I like going forward whereas guys like him love you coming forward you stand in front of them they just pop 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 like I think you'll be his hardest fight oh, well, I hope so because I've, I I looked at some of the other guys that he boxed and they didn't I had no disrespect to them but they didn't do much a, a lot of people go down for the payday you get paid well like they got, it's more if you don't throw a lot of shots you don't try and do nothing you just Put your gloves up, you're going to get less hurt. And take no risks, you know what I mean? But nah, I haven't got nothing to lose. I don't think you would enjoy just no, going I down just, and putting your hands up and just no, I would No, I would rather I would rather go out and give, if, depending on how fit I am next week, three, four rounds of everything. Push how many myself, rounds is the fight? Eight. 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 eight um, push myself to the limit. And if it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off. I think you'll do well. I mean, what, what, how would you can, what's that guy's level compared to someone like Dean Sutherland? Uh, I, I'm sure they've actually sparred together. Have they? Yeah, I'm sure. It's, I'm sure I've seen a photo of them a while ago. Um, I don't know. I think the, the level differences from down there to up here. Uh, obviously, guys like Eddie Hearns signed you, and one of the next best things. You're obviously really, really, really good. Um, because he he'll go far until he's tested. Until he's tested against someone like possibly me next week. And you don't know how far he'll go, but he's got all the backing from. He's got everything a pro boxer wants in their career, backing wise. Signed with Eddie, like everything's on his on his, on his plate. Just depends how he handles it. Yeah, I mean, 
that's the thing, you know, you, you, you sign for sign for someone like Eddie Hearn, and I can't speak for someone that signed for Eddie Hearn, but you have to keep winning. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? uh, a lot of pressure. A lot, of, a lot pre of pressure. If, I mean, one wrong move, then that can be, like, nobody's going to really, unless it's a world title type level, but when you're on the way up, and you, if you get beat for the likes of me next week, the boy from Scotland, like that's, it doesn't look good. No, that, like so, the, all the pressure's on him. You know what I mean? You you fuck up, that's you. Aye. If I fuck up, nothing happens to me. I get paid the same. Have you got some fans going down? No, no. no? There's a few people. There's a few boys go down, but a lot of people mess with me about tickets and stuff like that. And the hassle is like, it's it's hard enough trying to get people to go to Glasgow with the questions and is there a bus going? And um, what time do we need to be there? If it was like, like I fought on a Friday before and like, I finished work at five, will I make it? I'm like, I don't fucking know. I don't know when I'm going to be on. <laughs> Boys, sort I don't, I don't out, get hey. a quarter past six schedule. <laughs> hey, hey. Um, so this one, they were like, the like, it was just too many questions. I was like, look, if you just want to go, use a range, everything, get tickets online. Um, and a few boys messaging, we've got tickets. Um, but I, I don't want to arrange, like, all yous come down and mm -hmm. I don't see them, I don't speak to them. So. Hey. No. See, I, I mean, I, our, our broth is a town that loves boxing. Mm. So it's really, it really is a boxing town. Like, and yeah, the, always has been. Aye, the, the, the it's full of ex boxers. Mm. So many ex boxers, and, and people have come from Dundee and what have you as well. And uh, I just imagine that there's a lot of them do take an interest when you box. Initially, and, initially it was. Initially, it was really, really, really good. But then, like four, because I, because I'm quite active, four times a year, I'm asking people. To travel all the way down to Glasgow, Aberdeen, um, like these places, spend a lot of money because your ticket nowadays after COVID, the tickets are like a hundred quid. So you're a hundred pounds. You're your transport, however you're getting there. Your drinks. Are you going to stay over? If there's no bus on, how are you getting home? You need to stay at a hotel. It's it's a lot of money, and then people get that tanked up. That the next day they feel terrible. So their memory of coming to your fight. Fucking hell! I spent two hundred quid on my heat. Like it's not. It's not good. You can't do that four or five times a year. Nah. Um. Don't get me wrong. There's there's people that have been to basically every single fight, which is great, and it it, it doesn't happen without them. See, if people don't, if you kind of get people to come and put bums on seats at your fights. You ain't going anywhere. I was at one of your fights, but was that? you didn't box. <laughs> it was in Aberdeen. It was at the treetops. You were injured. I think you were going to box. And uh, you had a hand injury or something like that. Well, I quite recently. No, this was uh, this was about pff, nearly four years ago. It must you must have just turned pro. Uh, Twenty nineteen. It was before COVID. I can't mind. Well, uh, it was at the treetops. I'm not sure who you were going to box. I think who boxed that night. Um, one of the Stuart, Billy Stewart maybe boxed on top of the bill, possibly, but. Um, I, same thing I mean I think I had two bottles of wine at the table before the boxing even mm -hmm. started that's, so. that's mega expensive <laughs> they, put, they put wine on the table and I was the only one that drank wine on the table so I just had a whole lot perfect <laughs> <laughs> I would have done the same thing yeah it's, it's it's a lot to ask like it's, I don't know it's, it's you're 200 pound minimum right and then after it you feel like shit you don't get home to one o'clock in the morning a couple of months later like can you do that again? Like, that's how it works. And I've had so many people that have been at almost every fight, and if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have got near, I wouldn't have done anything, because it just doesn't happen. If you're not making no, any money, generating money, it doesn't work. Aye. It just doesn't work. It's great, though, Corey. Like, I mean, see that fight you had with Fraser Wilkinson when mm -hmm. you, you won the title? Fans love that sort of oh. thing. They love it. I love to see stuff like that. You know, like when you go and your man wins, the, the guy you're supporting wins. The story wins, behind but... it is... Like you say, it was set out to do none of this. None of this was supposed to happen. In my head, I had no intentions of doing any of this. And then dragging everybody through to Dundee, obviously it was a good turnout because it was in Dundee. Um, and when it was just it was surreal because it's been, like the first couple of years when I kind of funny about was in as serious as I took it. And then the hard work that I put in now, look after myself, try and stay active as much as I can. Um, it, all the hard work has eventually came to something that I never actually thought I would manage to do. And then getting this opportunity next week, the boxing is short, regardless of what happens in the fight, 
I can say I boxed on that show mm-hmm. on that massive platform. It's it's a huge deal. And I know you'll give it hundred percent as well. Oh no, definitely. I've got nothing to lose. Nothing to lose. Just to be there is I've won already in the minute. As long as I walk away healthy, I'm happy. I can't even remember who you boxed, right? But when you were a kid and you you were boxing as a youth, I remember I, I think I even have it on video somewhere because I have the whole show on video. Uh-huh. And um you were boxing some kid. I, I can't even remember who it was, but I remember thinking, oh, I can't believe it was he and had made the, done the matchmaking. And I said, oh, I can't believe you're putting Corey in with him. Like, and and I I was kind of doubting you. A wee bit, <laughs> like, and you just and you smashed this guy about the ring. Like, and I, I was like, oh my goodness, like that's that's amazing. Because you, you you don't care. That's what no, that's one thing about you. You just go in and you. And box is it's a scary sport because obviously people do get hurt. But apart from that, it's it's fun. People people do it because they enjoy it. Like. Yeah. I I would honestly fight every every month if I could. I know it's not good for my head, but just the feeling, the, like you say, the nerves, everything that comes with it, it's, it's surreal. Think, is it not good for your head? Like, I mean, you're going to box anyway, so you're going to rack up the fights anyway. I know, but it's just, if you had to box every month. Well, I always thought, that it's kind of like the amateurs, that, isn't it? You have to box well, yeah, whenever it, you're told. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> you know, it's not. So. It's like, the more research that is uh, coming out now, like taking that many punches to the head all the time, it's not good. We're not no. built to no, no. withstand blows to the head constantly, but it's for the love of the sport, you just you just keep pulling away, keep taking my these kinda, punches. I, I always thought, like, in, you know, in the amateurs, you're working so hard to keep your fitness up. Mm-hmm. Year-round. yeah. That you need to make the the most of it while mm-hmm. you while it's up because it's so hard to maintain and yeah the amateur I don't think I could even if I went but I wish I wish I did train the way I do now in the amateur scene I wish I did try and, and uh, apply myself and go and do stuff in the amateurs instead of just just doing it as a hobby type thing um but I don't think I would cope now see the way that like how some of these guys that I they're training constantly in the fight as often as they can whereas I like. You've got your eight weeks. Perfect. Eight weeks, just knuckle down. Once it's done, I can chill out. I can enjoy myself. Um, but these amateurs constantly fit. Yeah. Like, and they're fighting all the time. And I, it's no, I'm not cut out for that. Yeah. I suppose when, you know, when you're talking, when you're sparring with amateurs, like you were talking about before, mm. they're doing three, three minute rounds, full blast. Yeah. Aye. So that's what's difficult. And it, so if you, if I'm fighting you, right, you, you need to be fit. Because if you, like, the likes of these amateurs, for three, four rounds, they'll blast me away. Like, just with their speed and their technical uh, ability, it's just, it's amazing to, to watch. It's not too amazing to be in the receiving end of it. But after four, five, six rounds, and they start slowing down, and I just get, I I feel, I, I'm, I get stronger as the rounds go on. I feel fitter, I feel mm-hmm. more solid, but... Fuck, fighting these amateurs for three rounds. Like, I would rather they done three rounds with somebody else and then I'll come in yeah. and play. Let them tire out because they're some of the guys I've done rounds with are incredible. I, I, when they turn pro, I'm I'm quitting. <laughs> I'm not one. Right? I'm not one. None really? to do with these There's guys. Good amateurs yeah. down there. So oh, brilliant. Yeah. Really good guys. Yeah. Do you miss the amateurs? Nope. No. Nope. What What advice would you give any young boxer that? is currently an amateur and is thinking of being a pro if they could avoid a pitfall or or remember there's no friends it's pure business so if you were planning on turning over to the pro game make sure you're not in it for one the money you never be in the game for the money initially um and and treat it as a business because a lot of people, even me, when you, you go in, you think, oh, I'm going to get fights. I'm going to try and fight every month. Well, not every month. I'm going to fight as often as I can. Um, there's no, like, I'm just going to get a, a date and I'm just going to show up and fight. But it doesn't work like that. Like the, the, You need to sell tickets. You need to be a businessman. You need to make sure you're taking the right fights. It's just, it's, it's, it's like a job, a proper job. Not just, you've got this guy. Win, lose. And then if you, in the amateurs, you lose... You, you can go fight the guy again next week. It doesn't set you back. In the pros, you can go four fights winning. If you get beat once, you go back down to the... Even if it's a risky fight, you go back down to the, the bottom of the ladder. So it's it's a, it's a tough, tough, tough game. So probably the main bit of advice is don't do it. 
stay as an amateur as long as you can. <laughs> do it. If you've got a good job, stay as an amateur. Because you know, if you don't make it as a pro, you can't go back. No, I, I've I've always, I also work for myself, and my uh, I focus a lot on even for this fight. I've been uh, the, I've been trying to expand the business and do a lot more. Um, my head's more focused on that than the fight is. The money from the fight is going to actually go towards investing more into myself into oh, the good. business. Good, because um, that's long term. What are you doing? Plumbing. No, but what are you going to do with the business? How are you going to expand it? I'm going to try and get more people. I'm going to I'm going to try and take someone else on and try and expand expand out with Angus for work. Um, but having the money from the fight will give me that kind of backing to do so. So there's no financial pressure on myself. I could lose all the money, but I never had it to begin with, so it'd be fine. Um, but that's long term. Yeah. You know, in boxing, once you're done, that's you. I want to make sure the, the, the likes of this fight, I'll walk away if the, investing in the business does well and everything goes great, then I can walk away from boxing and be, this is what I've got to show for it. Yeah, that's great because... When you need to walk away with something, you've put in years and years of hard work and God knows how many sore faces for, what, like no financial benefit, nothing to show for it except a sore face. Yeah. Like, what? I want to make sure I can walk away with my head held high. I've done more than I thought I could do. And I'm financially better off because of it. Well, there's so many boxers that come away from boxing in, in a worse place. They're lost. And Why is that? I don't know. I've I've be, I've spoke to people about this before. Um and it wasn't until recently because I'm, I'm I'm 30 this year. And I know that my time will be coming to an end. And I'm not gonna push push it so far. Like once once I know I'll I'll get out and uh I am a bit concerned of what I'm going to do afterwards because I, I need, I think I need boxing to keep me fit, healthy. And after after a hard, if I can't be asked going out for a run or, or sprints or whatever I need to do that day, see when I've done it, I feel great. Even in the, when I get back to the house, I'm happy, I'm chirpy, I'm, I feel great. But when I don't need to do it, I don't need to go out and sprint, I don't need to work hard or put in a hard workout. I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to be like. And it is a little bit concerning. You need another hobby. Yeah, well, golf. I've, Mike, I've tried. <laughs> I've I've got the car one today. But see my van. There's golf clubs in the is van. It? I've not okay. been for a round of golf. Yeah. I just go at the driving range. Right. And I'm I'm still I'm still proud. Nah, I don't think golf would give you the same buzz as boxing. No, nah, I don't know. What, obviously, I played football for years and years, but obviously, having my son Mark now, I want to spend more time with him. You play football and you're training once a week and then your whole Saturday's a game. Aye. So. You had a go at, uh, did you have a go at, my, at MMA for a while as well? Or? No. I did I had, you? I had done an MMA fight. Right. Um, that was just a last minute. It was Martin Navarro had a bigger show on in Dundee and I was like, fuck, I want to fight on that. <laughs> God, I managed, yeah. I managed to I managed to wriggle myself <laughs> onto that show. Um, but when the grappling side of things, I didn't have a fucking Scooby was Didn't doing. know what you were doing. I just thought, I can punch. I've got, put little gloves on me, I'll be able to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. um, but no, MMA is quite hard. I would go down the, the grappling side of things. Like, uh, I think I would enjoy that. Well, I had, once uh, I'm done. I had Paul Benton on a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. He was the UK's strongest man and he's really got into uh, jiu-jitsu yeah. in Dundee recently. That's blowing up. That's getting huge now. Yeah. I, I was, I'm sorry, it has been... But even recently, people I know, I'm like, fuck, did you do that? Or I see photos online, I'm like, fucking hell, I never knew you were into that. It's um, quite scary, actually, Corey, because I, like, I've always thought, like, you know, learning boxing, you, you're pretty handy. You can you can handle yourself, mm -hmm. right? But there's all these dudes out there that can just fold you up like a cardboard box. Yeah, and there's nothing <laughs> to them. You know what I mean? The little guys are just, like, I, I mind, uh, I fought in a tournament, and was it in Aberdeen? Can't remember what the term was called, but I was out. I was out drinking the night before. And I thought, fuck it, I'll just go to this. Uh, shoot, was it? I can't remember what the tournament was called, but it was an MMA tournament in a boxing ring. I showed up thinking I'll enter the seventy kilogram uh, weight category, and I'm sure it was seventy eight kilo when I got there. So the guy was like, you, "And I this this is how unexperienced I was. I tried to lose eight kilo in the half hour grace period they gave me, which is literally impossible." Without chopping a limb off. Half a kilo. Eight kilo in half an hour. 
<laughs> but I, 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 I had no experience in right. But I didn't know. I didn't even know what weight I was. I just I was out the so night before. More than a stone. I just showed up and it was like you're eight kilo overweight. And he goes right. And he goes so you can try and lose a bit of weight to jump oh, down no. the weight categories. And I went up to the gym. It was in a. It was in an Aberdeen fucking sports co- like a, a high school or some s- sort of complex. So there was a gym upstairs. Fucking gain it. <laughs> Big licks on the 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 rowing machine with Paul Jonathan. Went back down and stood in the scale. I'm sure it was heavier when I stood in the scales. Like with the sweat and my, my, my boxes and my shorts. I was like, this is a fucking disaster. <laughs> like it was an absolute nightmare. And there was a nerdy boy that I've, I've, I've won two fights, got to the semi final, and I fought this kind of nerd boy. And I was like, oh, fucking, I'll destroy him. Like, oh, I'll eat him alive. Fuck, he tied me up. And I was like, this is insane. Like, so, so easy. Like they're so relaxed, these guys. It's like, fuck you, and you just don't know who can do it. Aye, like I wouldn't like to mess with someone who can do all that. No, I went sparring at an MMA club a few years ago, and um, it was like it was kind of like a relatively new club, mm-hmm. uh, and I felt quite at home standing up boxing. You yeah, know, I, felt, I, was just, I thought this is just an absolute doddle. They're uh, they're pretty hopeless this lot, like, and then <clears throat> we started grappling. And honestly, different game I tell you I just didn't have a clue no you know I was like how, how do I get out of this I, how, the guy's guy's got his arm around my neck and mm-hmm. I'm like what the f-? like I, I just had to tap out every time I yeah. didn't know I didn't know what I, I, no idea well, that's that that fight I took in Dundee was uh, the guy I was fighting Brian he was massive loon obviously had some experience and knew what he was doing one point in the fight I was on my back and he had the full mount position I'm sure it's called and he just landed and blows from up at the top. I was like, what the fuck are you meant to do? Like, there's nothing I could do. I'm sure, I'm sure not. the only way I got out of that was because the round was over. I was, like, I was lost. Aye. I don't know why. I was probably, I was up there with probably one of the, the stupidest fighting decisions I've ever made <laughs> to fight on an MMA show. And I was quite high up in the card. It was like, Aye. it was quite a big show for Dundee. And uh, yeah, I thought, fuck it. Oh, I can do MMA. I still think it's like that's the issue with me. I still think I could see if I go and apply myself for a few months, I could easy make it in the UFC. Aye. And then I need a reality check. I'll go to the gym and I'll get slapped about and I'm like, okay. I'll stick to plumbing and boxing. Just you, now. I, you know, having having one skill, one main skill is a massive if benefit. If you can get half decent at another one, you know, you, you don't need as much time to you know No. Well I've never applied to myself to anything bad boxing. Mm-hmm. So now that I know I have that kind of dedication in me, if I did go to try and some grappling stuff and I did apply myself, I could do it in my box and then I could maybe do it. So, Corey, speaking of MMA and boxing, what do you think of the upcoming fight between Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury? Is it a fair fight? On paper, no. Tyson's supposed to be one of the greatest heavyweights and he's fighting a guy that's never boxed. Yeah, um, so on paper, you, I, I don't see it. But when you when when you say it loud, it's like there's no fucking chance. But and, and that, that kind of in the heavyweight division, and fuck one hard hard swing, man, like, you could caught in the button, you're going down. So he has a puncher's that, chance. Like in Ganu, on, yeah, of course. But it is odd, like you say there, that in Ganu stepping into professional boxing and Never for his fought. first boxing match. He's taken on the heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. But obviously, this is all, it's all money. Everybody's more than aware of well, that. Well, I heard uh, Frank Warren on the Simon Jordan podcast, mm-hmm. and he said it was one of the biggest money fights he's ever put together. Yeah. Well, in fact, saying that, just before I came up here, um, I seen, there's a lot, I don't know if you've seen it online, the Fury and Usyk uh, done deal. That's agreed. That's agreed. And, yeah, I think I did. I, I I didn't see it. Somebody mentioned it to me today in the shop. Yeah, well, when I see something like that, you see it on one thing, like mm-hmm. bullshit. But all I seen, so it was obviously announced not not that long ago. Constant, every single different thing on my page on the pages was about that. So it yeah. must be official. And I'm sure it's the end of December twenty third or January that we're looking at. Right, Corey. As a professional fighter, break that fight down. For I don't me. want it because I look like a clown if I get it wrong. I think 
I, I, I don't know. I I think Usyk has a, a, a really good chance. Just due to his ability. I mean, I don't know. I just, when I see him box, uh, watched him box Joshua and how well he, he managed to handle a guy of a, a lot bigger. Obviously, Joshua, I don't know what's been going on with him. The way the, 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 I feel that he doesn't, doesn't go for gold now. He's more... I think because he, after his defeat, he's more collected and a bit more uh, wary of throwing his shots. So it was a bit easier for Usyk. But I don't know. I just think Usyk can just outbox Fury because Fury's a massive, massive guy. Yes, he can move. He can look See slick. The way that Fury stands up, right? He puts his front leg right out mm -hmm. and he stands up and he's got his chin right back. Uh, it's, and it's it hard to hit. But when you go up, when you take knockout and trying to land a big shot out of the equation and you go for just land shots, like Usyk in, ba ba bang out, stay away from him. Don't let Fury hold, like tie you up. I think he definitely lands shots, Usyk. Um, I, I, it's, it's, it's a real, it, it's like, a great interesting, fight. It's a very interesting almost fight. Almost like a freak show. Yeah. Because it's a tiny guy. Well, he's not tiny, but. Is a guy that has come up from cruiserweight, like mm -hmm. David Hay, mm -hmm. fighting a giant. Not like it's supposed to be one of the best. Sorry, he is one of the best heavyweights there's been. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but oh, I, I would, that's uh, I, like you say, it's a very, very interesting fight because I don't. I, I've been so many different minds, and there's so many scenarios that could play out in that fight. I, I fancy Fury for it, but I, I in my head, I can I keep visualizing the beatdown that he gave. Deontay Wilder mm -hmm. in the second fight and the power he was putting through those but shots. Do, do you know I think Wilder's not like he's got through his whole career because he's got a fucking monstrous right hand. He does, he does. And so you've you can you've knocked out all these average boxers and on paper your whatever his record is, you look incredible. You've went up against one hard man in Tyson Fury and you've been found out. That's the way I see it. Um but the likes of Usyk's no mug that doesn't know how to box. He's elite, the elite of the elite. And uh, Fury's a massive, massive target in your way. I, I don't know. It's 50-50 for me. What did, what did you think of the Daniel Dubois-Usyk fight? The low blow that could have been a body shot? So people were asking me this, the work the following day. The, the rule... It's not, I, I, assume, I thought it had to be your jewels that got hit for it to be a low blow. Like that's what I've always just assumed. If you're hitting the jewels, that's a low blow. But it's not. So it's, I don't know, like the official, official rule. But it's if it's lower, then if it's like, I don't know if it's under your belly button or whatnot, that's classed as an illegal blow. Right. So it doesn't have to be your... Your meat and veg that is, gets hit. Is the belt line legal though? So the, that there's a discrepancy in that because your belt could be high up. You see boys with the, the right. belts really high. I remember Eubank used to wear his his shorts right up right up his So nipples. because the higher you've got your protective uh. your uh, your groin guard on, like this, if you get hit in the groin guard, it's going to hit hurt less than getting hit. So people pull them way up. I don't. I think it has to be the referee's discretion. Like or if officials have the fin final say because if you've got your waistcoat if you've been caught with an uppercut and it's pulled your thing up and you get hurt underneath but it's a perfect body shot like who's to say you know what I mean it's I, I, I think Usyk was smart enough though that if it was a low blow he's went down and he's used like he's used that instead of saying nah who's going to turn around and say ah, it was definitely a low blow like, but but key here, this is what I really, whether it was legal or not or whatever, <clears throat> I think the thing is, was he hurt by a body shot, do you think? I, like, my honest opinion, I think he was hurt, but he used, he's obviously smart. His IQ used his, yeah. He's used his brain and yeah. thought, play this as a fucking low blow. Aye. And then, like, because obviously the, his reaction, mm -hmm. like, that's the way you react for but a to, body shot. To, to me, it was the first time I thought I'd seen a chink in his armour. You know, you thought, mm, yeah, mm, but no. then it could. But even with a low blow, like I, I don't know, I, I I genuinely do think he was hurt, like a, a, a proper body shot. Mm -hmm. 
Like that was as, as official as it gets. That was a body shot that's hurt you. Yeah. you the only thing was, like, see what it hit him. Like to me, it hit him in the front and the lower abs. Uh -huh. I've never seen someone going down from being hit there. No, because usually your solar plex or the rib. Yeah, like that's yeah. the ones that put them down. Uh, so then again, you could argue maybe it was a low blow. But then I've been hit lowish there, and it does not If it doesn't hit your your crown jewels, then they've never really been hurt by a shot like that. But obviously, fucking heavyweight flinging a a shot at you is going to be a bit different. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. But yeah, but like, kudos to him. If, how smart he played that and that's that's the heavyweights what about your division the top of your division isn't it uh it's terence crawford isn't it i mean he's the main man yeah what yeah. about him what a specimen he's what a blueprint what the, like eh? when, when he was fighting spence so when i was training in texas i went to a gym and done a few rounds with some boys and they were uh errol spence is from texas so they're they all kind of everybody's like fucking teams uh Spence across across there, um, and when we were speaking about it, we're like, ah, he's gonna he's gonna do Crawford, and I was like, I want him to because I quite like Errol Spence, um, but that performance he had, I don't know if the weight was anything to do with, it, but he made him look fucking, he's just elite. I thought it was gonna be such a good fifty fifty, it couldn't have been further wrong. Like that, he's he's next level. Yeah. He's miles. He's so talented. That's amazing. And the way he was picking his shots, and he 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 did just, he just dominated yeah. Spence. <laughs> I don't think he gets the credit. Maybe not in the UK. Across there, he probably does, but I don't feel that he gets the credit that he's uh, due from your average boxing fan. Do you know? Actually, I, one of the things I thought when I was watching him, I thought like we need to remember here just how good Ricky Burns is because mm -hmm. he he did twelve rounds yeah. with that guy. And he didn't get beaten up. He, he lost well, right? But he didn't get beaten up quite as bad as Errol Spence mm -hmm. did. You know? As it puts it in a perspective. I it don't does. know why. I, 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 there was a lot of people saying that Spence had struggled to make the weight. And uh, obviously there's always an excuse after the I don't think fight. at that level you can even make that excuse. You know? No. You, you've had how many fights? Yeah. You're four weeks out from your fight. Surely you'd be like... You've got money coming out of your ears. You can get a, con a conditioning expert, a nutritionist. Every everybody's there for you. Yeah, just you don't know? fucking eat the Chinese. Just just do well for a few more weeks. It's not difficult. Not when not when it's your full time job. It's hard, guys like me. You finish work late at night, eight o'clock at night. You, yeah. could, you don't want to go make chicken and vegetables. You want to eat the fucking pot noodle that takes two minutes to make. Make this. But these guys, this is a full time job. There's a lot of talk of uh, Crawford fighting. Alvarez now yeah that, I don't see that playing well for him Alvarez no for Crawford, Crawford yeah depends what weight though surely you know if it, if it was that middleweight possibly I, I can completely see why Canelo is avoiding not avoiding him but it's the same as uh, Davis had the same issue with Javonta Davis had the same issue with somebody if Canelo if he comes up to fight Canelo it's the same position I'm in just now Crawford's got uh, nothing to lose He's took a massive step off. If he gets beat, it's like fucking well done for stepping up. If if Canelo loses, fucking I've just been beat by a little guy. Like, that doesn't say much for you. You know what I mean? So if I was in Canelo's shoes, I'd be like, why the fuck would I risk getting beat by somebody that's got nothing to lose? You know what I mean? It's I, I'm It'd be quite hard for Alvarez actually to come down and fight Crawford because he's he's put on so much muscle yeah he's getting older the older right. you get the harder it is to get it off it's yeah it's a, it's a riskier fight for him for Canelo with no because if he beats some people be like, you just beat a little guy that's jump up two three weight classes to fight it's not Crawford probably thinks you know who is he gonna box who's the who's the big money fight for him now because well that that is that it's a huge it would, it would sell it would just do massive numbers maybe he'll fight Jake Paul maybe <laughs> do you know what like I mean when Jake Paul came on the scene and his first thing was uh, he wanted to fight Canelo eventually I'll fight I Canelo blah 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 that, yeah. Canelo never would oh, entertain that right? but, yeah. but I reckon honestly in the next three four years that fight will happen thing is you know he, Jake Paul's offering silly money to I, and I would like to see the contracts actually oh right oh but like it's probably you know you're only getting a portion of that money if you don't, if you, if you win, uh -huh. you know, but uh, Canelo doesn't need that money. No, he's, he's got no. bags of money. 
mega money, mega yeah, bucks. And, and then do you risk losing your, your whole legacy of being this guy that fights anybody to go fight a YouTube star? It's, you don't need, he's, like you say, he's mega, mega wealthy. doesn't need a penny, but I just see it like, depending on how much he was offered just to shut somebody up. Because if you see if you put them in the ring just now, like it would be terrifying. Oh, like frightening. And <laughs> Jake, but I like bet that murder. Jake, Jake Paul, he's probably got the same kind of mindset as me. He's like, mm -hmm. I, I reckon I could actually do pretty well. Even I, I'm not that fucking stupid. I, I thought, you see, when he fought Tommy Fury, mm -hmm. I actually thought he had a look in his face, a sudden realization. Shit. Aye. I, I'm not, yeah, I do it. I do it as well. Like, you feel that you're going to, you feel, you, you always believe, like self-belief that he obviously has. You obviously think you're better than you really are. And I think I've had that issue. I always think I could go and do fucking, I could easy do that. I I reckon if I applied myself for six months, I could be a fucking tennis star. Aye. I genuinely believe that just now. <laughs> but then if I go and play tennis against somebody half decent Aye. in six months, I'll be like, oh shit, I've been put in my place. And I think it, that's the same that if he fought, Tommy Fury's maybe not the best example to give him a doing, but you put him in there with somebody... He's a genuine professional. An, an experienced pro that's, that's the, from the UK that's... Fit, active, hits hard. He's, he will fucking get a mega shock. Yeah. I mean, I've, in the times that I've sparred with a professional fighter, I, I've thought it was like night and day mm -hmm. between... You know, amateur boxing and pros, the lev the step up, yeah, the level up. And um I thought that when I you know, when he fought Tommy Fury, there was a look in his face like Oh no. This guy's not like washed up. Yeah. <laughs> and he's fighting these MMA guys have got huge names from what they've done in the sport, like that Tyrone Woodley and whatnot. They are huge megastars, but not in that sport. You know what I mean? Yes, it's a combat sport, but T uh, timing, distance, everything's different. Everything's different. And he's old and he's on his way out. Like, so he's obviously picked, so he's smartly picked an MMA fighter on his way out. But you put him, Tommy Fury obviously beat him, which we were all kind of hoping for because that would be very bad for fucking boxing if oh, we never. No. I, I think I, I would have had to leave. I, I think it would have been bad for Tommy Fury's for the rest of his life. Oh, he, oh geez, imagine that. In the traveling community. Oh. He'd be disowned. He'd never be able to live it down. He couldn't show his face. No. Definitely not. His dad. You know what was his dad say? Oh. He said stuff like, if, like, where was the fight? I think it was abroad. Like, don't Saudi come back. Saudi yeah, it? Don't come back to the hotel. Aye. Like, you'll not be coming back with us if you get beat. Aye. Imagine the poor cunt must have been terrified. Aye. I read that his dad's going to be fighting Mike Tyson. Oh, I've seen, I seen a bit of that. Is that real? Is that going to happen? I don't know. I would love that. That would be very <laughs> fun. I'd pay more money to watch that than I would any other. Spence, uh, Crawford and Canelo. No, I want to see John Fury. And I think Big John would give it a go. Oh, 100%. Wouldn't he? Like Tyson's what, fucking 90 now? Ancient. He's not going to... No, he keeps himself in shape. He looks great. Did you see the Tyson Roy Jones exhibition? I never watched it. I've seen highlights. Oh. And he still swung the way he did. Obviously, we're less in it, but... He well, still looked like the same kind of guy that he was, didn't he? Roy Jones came out saying it was the hardest fight he'd ever had. <laughs> 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 like an exhibition with Mike uh -huh. Tyson. Yeah, but because the thing is with Mike Tyson, he's got this propensity to lose his mind, you know? He just loses mm. it. He's, he's just... You'll never see anybody like him, ever. No. Ever again. Like He's so unique. He was just... He's, he's a scary, scary, scary man. Like All the videos you see, he was like... Well, the stuff you see on YouTube and all the stuff you used to say after these fights or June pressers, you're like, you're fucking terrifying. He 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 was really wild though. Like I mean, like that's that's genuine. He was genuine mad. Aye, like a scary, scary, scary guy. I saw, I watched the movie and he said that he, you know, they were asking him why he was so crazy and he said, well, I've been in jail for four four and a half years and I came out with two hundred million dollars in my bank account. <laughs> You know, and he just went mental. It's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? That's not going to go go well. And all the hangers on, and I mean, that was one of the things. He he had a great mentor in the early part of his career, mm -hmm. and then when he died, Customato mm -hmm. Tyson, he just had other people that that that's, they were like leeches around him. Yeah, they just saw him as 
you know, a meal ticket. Yeah, and I think the type of person he was, he wasn't as switched on enough to see all this happening. You've got that much money. You you obviously don't think it's ever going to come to an end. Like, you can't spend it. Like, it's coming in as fast as you're spending it. But then eventually, time catches up. It's You, you had none after, the, like, I think, uh, can't mind how much he said he had. And then it went to... He ended up, being, you know, like owing 40 mm -hmm. million in taxes or something like that. Madness. Yeah. You need to have some sort of level head, surely. But he was a fucking... He didn't... Do you really think Mike Tyson had some sort of... Do you know what? I'm going to invest this money. <laughs> like, can you, you ever... Know, I'm going to buy some property. Yeah. Like, definitely not. Yeah, I mean, he was from... He was from... Uh, where was he from? The Bronx? Was yeah. In, uh, rough upbringing. Yeah. He's as fucking rough as they come. Probably never learned anything about no. how to... Look after his money. Or like yeah. you said, pay your taxes. You'll make millions of... It's just yours. Just keep it. Just do what you want, Mike. Like, it's quite sad when you hear stories of, of fighters ending up on, you know, washed up yeah, with... It happens all... Like, nothing. You're the king of the world. Like, guys have won world titles, top of the world, money, everything, cars. Once it's done, where do you go? Yeah. I heard Alex Arthur talking about this. Mm-hmm. He said that, you know, you've got all this adulation, like there's thousands of people calling your name and everything, and then you, all of a sudden they're not. Stops. And the problem with boxing is that you're taught not to show any emotion whatsoever. You're taught to, don't show any weakness. Don't let your opponent see anything, and, and, and you kind of, you're living by that. And then when he, you know, when you retire... You then can't talk to people about the way you yeah. feel because it's weird you say that because my my partner always brings that up. She always says you've got no emotion. You don't let anything bother you. And I've never ever ever put anything like that down the box. And I've always just put it down to I'm I'm too happy to be worrying about fucking shit that I can't control. You know what I mean? That's weird you say that because she always says anything, nothing bothers you. Why doesn't it, the only thing that bothers me just now is when we man gets up at one o'clock in the morning because I know he doesn't go back to sleep till about four or five uh, okay. and I've got work the next day. Aye. That's the only thing I'm like, fucking hell, this is hard Aye. work. That's a real problem. But apart from that, Aye. I don't let anything get to me. I don't let anything phase me. And she always, says, she always brings that up. I've got no but, emotion. You know, Corey, it probably does come from boxing because you're, you're having to deal with a physical fight with a live opponent, you know, someone who is your equal and mm -hmm. can hurt you. That it doesn't get much harder than that, and then no, anything that's not as hard as that is he, I, is going to be. It's not going to. I, I, I see. That I've never actually put it down to that at all. I've never even thought about it like that. But I, I get the the gist. It's like to even you know yourself to step in through through the ropes at any level. It takes so much courage, and it's 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 daunting. It's scary, and then obviously you jump up the levels, a professional level, a little of gloves. You don't know how tough this guy is how hard he hits it's, it's scary um and you have you have to, to learn to deal with all their feelings go ahead go ahead with it so anything else that comes to you is n like in life is is nowhere near it's, it's not physical as as the, like the, everything just eventually disappears everything's fine but the fight for weeks nerves everything playing it back in your head like loads of aspects come into it and it Anything else, it's like, fuck, I don't, like, this is, I've got, I, I've not got time to think about any of this. I've got a fight coming up. And then maybe is, plays a part, I'll maybe mention that to her when you I go just home. Bit, I, I think you do, like, you just, because of the way the sport is, you have to become conditioned to... Oh, your mind needs to be bulletproof. Yeah, you can't say you have a problem. No. You know, because, well, like you say, you, you even the little things that you were talking about in your training where you think, oh, I've skipped something, that mm -hmm. bothers you. Right, so you, you can't even admit you have a problem. No, you can't or... let it. You can't let it make a, yeah. a, a, a an impact on how you're feeling. Because I've always been like that, and she brings like nothing. Nothing gets to me. I don't speak about anything. If I'm not, if I'm being, if I've, if I've had a hard week at work and shit's not going to plan or just anything, I don't speak to anybody about it. She says that's a real issue, and I'm like, well, it's not because I'm always happy. I'm fine. Everything's fine. She goes, that's how people like. Are really unhappy because they've got no they don't speak about anything they bottle everything up and I'm like I don't bottle it up I just don't fucking speak about it it's not an issue I've never put it down and I've just thought it was the way I am Aye. but maybe it is that 
<laughs> At least there's a reason for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing though. Like having having a bit of mental resilience. No, I, I like. Tough, I, but I really like the way I am. Yeah, it's probably for for some people, and I wouldn't say for you, but I reckon for some people, like someone who's you know they've gone to the top, they've had ten like Ricky Hatton, mm -hmm. tens of thousands of people calling his name, and then all of a sudden, Nine. the whole world watches you lose. Nobody's calling your name anymore. The career is over. Reality sets in. Yeah, you're not the. And he didn't have a. He didn't have a a business to go to. No. You know his whole life was just that, and and I think he thrived on that. You know, like oh, hundred percent. Was... You walk down the street after you. Everybody knows. You, everybody's asking you. For, and then, year two years after you retire, it's, you're just normal civilian essentially. You know what I mean? It, it, it must be hard. Of the never experienced anything at that level but it'll be the same idea mm -hmm. be the same. once it's gone it's gone you don't feel you're the man you don't feel that people are asking you about your fights and whatnot that's it's all it's all finished for like I said to you I don't know how I'm going to cope once well, I'm worried about it I just don't know what I'm going to do I don't know how I'm going to feel when it's not a case of when you get the call and you're like right fuck I need to get up Monday morning that's it back out running you feel good you feel hel healthy once I'm, I'm going to have nothing to to stay in shape for now. C could you see yourself coaching in the future? No, 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 definitely not. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've got the the patience. See my uh, my step kids, they're uh, they're coaches from football coaches. They don't get paid for nothing, and uh, they show up from three times a week to. I think it's an hour and a half of training twice a week and then the game on a uh, Sunday. See the time they give up mm -hmm. to to coach. For nothing. Kids mm -hmm. for nothing. I'm like, they type of people are absolute godsends. And and, uh, and I don't think I have that, that kind of commitment. I would hate to commit to, right, I'll coach young kids and then, do you know what, I'm, go I'm not going to do, do it tonight because I'm way out for tea. Right. And then let them down. I, j I don't think I've got that niceness in me it's not just I that, wish actually. I actually uh those coaches the foot the the coaches of football and rugby and i mean i think actually mainly specifically football mm -hmm. the coaches get an awful lot of grief as well um from parents and yeah. other teams and, and for what for, what are you doing it for for it's people like that are even boxing coaches do it for nothing shug the amount of shit that you said to put up with me for years years Obviously, he gets a couple of quid for doing his job when he's when we're fighting, but nothing like nothing worth Listen, your when, while. When I was coaching, I'll, I'll not name names here. Right? <laughs> when I was coaching, uh, there was one fight. I I was the bucket man, mm -hmm. right? So I'm passing up the sponge, right? And this guy lost, and the and the guy's dad blamed me. Oh no! <laughs> I was only handing the sponge up, you know. I mean? Fuck! If, you, if you're part of it, you're in the blame. And imagine that yeah, kind of pressure like, for for what? Yeah, but I'm giving up my time for nothing. Yeah, you know? like, and you're getting the, I was getting the blame. The no, yeah. I don't think I could uh, cope with that. <laughs> I've not. I've not got it in my uh, the commitment that these guys, especially like amateur boxer coaches, they they're in there sometimes. Depending on how often the gym's open. They're there, you see the same face you see all the fucking time. I, I, I did enjoy, I do enjoy hanging about the boxing club. I've got to say, like, I do. Don't get me wrong, like, I, I would enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I would enjoy helping, but having no full commitment, as selfish as that sounds. I like being able to do what I want. I like being able to, or if I'm working late, I don't need to worry about getting home to go and train. But I, I, I would like to help out, take people on the pads and whatnot. So, but I just couldn't commit and be. A coach, definitely not. There's a lot of guys that uh, have been very good boxers, and whenever they go down the club, they're just they just spar, spar with everybody. Mm -hmm. Like someone we both know, Steve Doherty, he, mm -hmm. he'll still spar. Oh, I've yeah. seen him for a couple of years, but uh, I don't know how old he must be. Late forties now, yeah. and he'll go down and he'll just spar yeah. all <laughs> night with everyone. Dan Foster, Darren Foster, he another is one. the. He'll never stop. I don't he'll never stop sparring he's done that since I was a kid since would I was you, like Connie, would you just go no, down and spar no definitely no. not it's too hard no like, I was I was sparring with uh, Hayden Sutton uh -huh. for when he was learning and I would go I'd go and spar with him for 
45 minutes mm -hmm. standing in the ring we wouldn't, we wouldn't ring the bell it would just be 45 minutes straight and then as he started to get better i, I thought uh, this is no the this isn't fun anymore anyway, anyway. no, huh? <laughs> no no he's a heavyweight now and uh, he dishes out some power like mm -hmm. he's got a heavy shot so no, i still i, I sparred with amateurs from the the Admiral boxing club where we all started but obviously i don't try and hunt anybody i don't tend to throw a lot of punches but some of the guys that are good and i'm getting caught left right and center because i'm not throwing nothing back i can't really stop them on the tracks because it'd be a bit of a fucking bully you wouldn't do that um I'm like, fuck, I can't keep, I can't keep letting them hit me. So once the bell's like, I'm like, that's plenty. Next person in, hopefully just a little fucking <laughs> boy that's not going to do much damage. Because <laughs> yeah. some of them are good and you yeah. try to show them the ropes and they're trying Aye. to impress and they're throwing big Aye. one dudes. You're like, well, prick that Aye. fucking, that but you don't want You don't want to sicken them at the same time. You know? No, you like, don't want to, it's like, fuck this. Yeah. Get the small gloves on. I know. <laughs> yeah. so it's, but at the end of the day, you don't want to be getting punched for nothing. It's not, it's not ideal. Would you say, like, I mean, talking to help, you're helping others and uh, sparring in other clubs and that, in your boxing career, who would you say have been mentors to you? Shug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John Cooper. Mm -hmm. uh, these are guys that I've known, like, for how long? When they're like 14 year old. Watched them through it. They've always been involved. Um, but as it stands just now, it's just me and Shug that do all this. Like, there's me and him that go everywhere for sparring. Like that, it's just we deal with everything ourselves, um, and obviously he coached me when I was young. He's been he's been there since how many years will that be? God knows how many years, and the amount of shit that he has to put up with me now, mm -hmm. it's inspiring. He's got the patience <laughs> of a saint. Honestly, yeah. he knows me. He knows me like like a book man. It's, if he messages me. What, what, ask him what my weight is I usually mess him a couple of times a week what, what weight are you he knows whatever I say take off a couple of kilo because I'm <laughs> okay. talking absolute shite aye, aye. I'm lying through my teeth and he knows it <laughs> so he's been there since day one yeah. um, none of this none of this would have happened without him um, so Corey I want to ask you if you were me and you were running a podcast uh -huh. who's the one person you'd want to interview on a podcast dead or alive Say Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez? <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't know. See, recently, see all of these little comments he makes at interviews, and whatnot. I think he'd be hilarious. I think he's got a genuine funny side to him. Right. I think he'd be, I think he'd be a great laugh to chat good, away to. You should try and get him on. Oh, I think he'd be brilliant. You see, there was a video I seen he was having, there was a DJ playing, he always had a couple of drinks, and he was, I can't remember what he was shouting. But he was shouting something at the top, the top of his voice. He also had a good few scoops. I, I think he's got a little side to him where he's uh, fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So Canelo Alvarez. Yeah. He'd be the main man. Yeah. For a I'd... podcast. Well, I might get him on the podcast. I'll message. I message him. You can you're always. Yeah. There's, there's no. There's no. If the podcast well ever gets anywhere, if we ever actually, if I can ever actually expand it to a decent size, maybe I'll get him on. Mm -hmm. And I'll come as well. Yeah. I did message Josh Taylor. Uh huh. Never got a reply. No. No. Well, just message him again. He's a pretty busy guy. Like, yeah, I think keep... he had a world title fight coming up. <laughs> the following week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't work. I forgive him. Yeah. Wait, till, wait. Till, I don't know if he's getting anything planned. No, I'd love to see him back in the ring. Uh, coming up, no. We went. I went. I've been down to see him a few times. Uh, boxing at the Hydro. Mm -hmm. Brilliant night. He always has a really good fight. Yeah, always very uh, entertaining. Yeah, and and you know something? Did you did you see the Regis Progre fight? That was yeah. one of my favourites because Progre was coming across as one of these guys who they were kind of saying like this could be the guy that beats Josh Taylor. Mm -hmm. You know, he's this hot American that's the next best thing, and uh, Taylor really took him into the trenches. Yeah, that's what's good about watching him. Yeah, I love that type of style. It's just hard work. Yeah. work. Like out grinds your uh, opponent. That's what he did. But he's got obviously skill and everything like that. He's, he's, got he's skill, very skillful. But, but that grind and uh, that heart he's got. He can stand in the trenches. Oh, I love seeing that. Yeah. Like all these yeah. slick boxes are fun to watch. They're skillful, but I want to see blood, sweat, and fucking tears I in there. It's like it. You see when you, you see that you see that in Mexican fighters. Oh. But you see it in Scottish fighters. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, if, if, like you see that in Scottish fighters. There's so many Scottish fighters where you see that. 
resilient. Tough and grit, yeah. It just, it, it pops up and you're like, oh, wow. Oh, and it's, yeah. even, it's even, you're in that situation, you know the guy, your opponent's kind of dying out. That's that's even better. It gives you that wee second win and it's just nitty gritty. And that's, 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 that's my ideal fight, is standing toe-to-toe, -to -toe, as long as he doesn't hit too hard. But standing toe to toe and grinding it out and see who gives up first. Do you think Boss Dan will stand toe to toe with you? No, he'll never stand toe to toe with anybody, no. unless he sees me fading out. Unless I'm on my way out, if I'm getting tired, then maybe. But no, he's 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 too good to do that. It's not worth it's not worth the risk standing there and getting caught in the button. Um, but no, I would like him to eh? give me a better chance of putting him <laughs> on his backside, but. <laughs> Well, I wonder know. how big the ring's going to be. You know, maybe it'll be a small ring, Corey. It'll suit you. Well, maybe because Lee Wood and Josh Warren, and they'll uh, they'll be a toe to toe kind of war. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it'll be a wee ring, so you get a good entertainment with them. Yeah, that'll, that'll be a good be. fight. Oh yeah. What channel is it going to be on? I think it's on that the zone. It's on the zone. Dan's the zone, whatever the hell it's called. Okay. Um, I don't know if they broadcast it on any channels or if it's just through that app. You need to watch it. Okay. I'm not sure. Oh, I'd imagine something like that would be pay per view. I'll be pay per view, yeah. but via that the zone. So you obviously pay a subscription, and you pay a, a, a smaller fee for pay per view, or you can just go online, download it, and get the the pay per view on its own. I'm sure, it's on that because that's what he runs. That's what all Eddie Hearn stuff's on. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I'm sure it's on that. Well, Corey, I got to ask you uh, before we wrap up. What do you hope for the future, the next 12 months? Where do you want to be with boxing? Um, I would like another opportunity after this one on another big all going well with uh, this one next week. Um, I don't want to fight. I would rather fight on big shows with all the odds stacked against me. So maybe another two, three fights like that. If not, in between, maybe try and fight for another title or defend mine. Um but once once that's done, once I've had another couple of big shows, maybe had another title, that'll be that'll be enough for me. I'll be on my way out. A British title? Mm. Is that possible? It's uh, anything's possible. If I go and pull off a good performance next week, maybe get an, another title under me, and somebody pulls out a British title, you, the doors, the phone can go any minute for something like that. It's a. Uh, I don't think people realise that if somebody pulls out a fight and there's a, the A side, the guy that's supposed to be winning the British, like everybody's in favour of, he needs an opponent. They'll phone anybody with a half decent record. I don't know if there's a rule in how many fights you need to have or whatnot, but it could happen at any point. And if you stay ready and stay fit and you take that opportunity and you pull off an upset, then you a new British champion. Anything can happen in boxing. Anything. Well, Corey, honestly, I wish you all the best for next week I'll be absolutely rooting for you Thank we'll you. tune in we'll be watching and uh, so if anyone else wants to watch at home Dazzin's the place to go and mm -hmm. find that fight this Saturday night Saturday night Saturday it, yeah. 7th October yeah yeah. all the best Corey thank, thank you, you so man. much for coming on to the yeah, podcast boy, thanks for having have me you, have you back sometime again yep. soon British yeah. Charming movie <laughs> yeah I <laughs> hope so good, yeah. right thank you very much no problem thank you